As long as you can apply the basic limit rules like the sum rule, etc., computing limits is no problem at all. It basically boils down to plugging in numbers directly into a function. Unfortunately, for most limits we encounter, we will not be able to use our basic rules directly. We end up, for example, with a denominator whose limit equals zero, which means that we cannot apply our rules like the quotient rule directly. What to do in that case? Well, we have a lot of nice tricks you can use. You will encounter the first one and the examples in this video. For example, limit x to 1 of x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Well, if you would plug in uh, x equals 1 directly, you get 1 minus 1 equals 0. Over 1 minus 1 equals 0, you get 0 over 0. So that's not going to work. So what can we do? Well, we know that uh, x squared minus 1 can be factorized as x minus 1 times x plus 1. And then we take the limit x to 1, which means that x is not equal to 1. x is only very close to 1, but not equal to 1, which means that we may cancel out the factors x minus 1. So our quotient is just x plus 1. So how can we compute the limit? Well, limit uh, x to 1 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 equals limit x to 1 x plus 1, uh, because x is not equal to 1. So that's why we could cancel out those factors x minus 1. And then we are happy again, you can uh, use the sum rule, and then, uh, uh, then you are done directly. That just equals 2. Next example. Uh, and then we have the uh, limit uh, h to 0, 3 plus h squared minus 9 over h. Well, what happens if we would try to plug in h directly? Well, you see uh, 0 in the denominator, so there's something that's going wrong there. And we have 3 squared minus 9, 9 minus 9 equals 0 in the numerator, so 0 over 0. So plugging in 0 directly is not going to work. We cannot do something like quotient rule. What happens if we work out the numerator first? So we have our 3 plus h squared, work out the brackets, so we get the uh, 9 plus 6h plus h squared over here, the minus 9, which we keep, and then the plus 9 and the minus 9 are cancelling out. So we have says 6h plus h squared, and we can take out a factor of h. And now we can compute our limit, because now something nice is going to happen. Uh, plug in this factorization here, so h times 6 plus h divided by h. Now we're taking limit h to 0, so h is not equal to 0. So that means, because h is not equal to 0, that's why we can cancel out those factors of h over here. And then we just have our limit h to 0 of 6 plus h. And that one is innocent. We can apply some rule. And we get limit h to 0 of 6, which is just 6. And limit h to 0 of h, which is 0. So we get 6 plus 0 equals 6. So there we have our limit. Next example. Ah, absolute value. Be careful with that. x to 0 of x absolute be divided by x. Let's take the limit uh, uh, from above first. So if x is positive, then the absolute value of x is x. And that means that our function x absolute value of x equals x over x equals just 1. So taking limit from x to 0 from above, that one is very easy because we just have to take the limit from x to, to, x to 0 from above of the function 1, which is just 1. So what's the problem in the example? Well, if x is smaller than 0, if x is negative, then the absolute value of x equals minus x. Well, why is this? If x is, for example, minus 3, then the absolute value of minus 3 equals 3. So what's the, uh, if you want to get rid of the absolute value, then you have to add, add an additional minus sign. The absolute value of x equals then minus minus 3 equals plus 3 again. So uh, absolute value of x equals minus x, so our function becomes x absolute value over x equals minus x over x equals minus 1 now. Well, still no problem in, in the limit, right? Limit x to 0 of x absolute value over x is just uh, now uh, limit x to 0 of the function minus 1 equals minus 1. But look what happens now. Limits going from above and from below, they are not the same. They are 1 and minus 1. So there are the one is approach, uh, first limit approaches 1, other one minus 1, so they do not match up, which means that our limit x to 0 of x absolute of x does not exist. 